Hello everyone, I'm Tianqi from the Johns Hopkins University. I'm glad to share the recent work from our group, and the title is Connections Between Residual Networks and Explicit Numerical Integrators with Applications to the Identification of Nonlinear Dynamical Systems. Now we use a very simple case to give you some first impression of non-utability. Consider a scalar OD that dx over dt is equal to some quadratic function of x with an appropriate initial condition x0. We know that the solutions for the OD are unique once they exist. So we are good to go no matter forward or backward time. But if we are considering a numerical integrator, for example, the forward order scheme, as you see, it is easy to see its forward integration is good. For any value of xn, we could get a unique value of xn plus one. Well, if we are trying to find where a point comes from, no matter how accurate the integrator is, we will fall into trouble, as there might be two inverses or no inverses at all, independent of its accuracy. There's something unusual about the nature of the integrator, a phenomenon that shows non-uniqueness in backward time integration. We call it non-invertible. OK, so let's say this in a more formal way. In view of dynamical systems, ODE could be considered as continuous systems, also called flows. It is unique going forward and backward, and therefore invertible. These numerical integrators are considered as discrete time dynamics. For these explicit integrators, their forward time dynamics are good. But for implicit integrators, even forward time dynamics might not be unique. As we mentioned before, if these dynamics are multivalued or even un undefined, we call these systems non-invertible systems. We would like to use the model of the brush litter to illustrate our ideas. This model comes from some chemical reactions where the concentration of several chemical species exhibit periodically changing. In general, the brush litter model is an OD with two variables, x and y, representing the dimensionless concentration of two chemical species. Here, a and b are two parameters which will affect the dynamics. Now we will fix a equals to 1 and investigate how value of b will change the behavior. Furthermore, we could also use forward order approximation to change the model as discrete time dynamics, where tau here is a positive time step, and we will fix the, its value as 0 0.15 for further discussion. We could also see the evolution of the states. Here, we use the cases of b equals to 1 and b equals to 3. At first, both systems share the same fixed point. And for b equals to 1, the fixed point is an attractor for both, system, both systems. And this point will become unstable for a larger value of b, indicating the occurrence of half fabrication and some value of b. More specifically, for ODE, the eigenvalues of Jacobian matrix are purely imaginary when the half bifurcation happens. And for the map, that the, the same eigenvalues of Jacobian matrix will be located on unit circle when the half bifurcation happens. There are also some differences for both systems. The evolution of ODE is smooth, while the older map has some jiggling and at the bottom right region of the state space plot. Although they both form a big attractor for case of b equals 3. But the OD, we call it limit cycle, but for the map, it's inverse circle, and they are not the same thing. We should say the difference of the older map compared with OD results from the pathology of discretization. Also, same thing as non immutability Now we are going to take a look at the backward time dynamics of this older map. First, we re rearrange the equation of xn plus 1 and substitute this into equation of yn plus 1. If the values of xn plus 1 and yn plus 1 are given, we could get a cubic equation of xn. And this equation will probably have 1, 2, or 3 distinct real roots. Now we'll consider the inverses or points that are located on this attractor, which color in blue in these figures. For case of b equals to 2, the attractor is a small invariant circle. For every point on this circle, their images should be still located on this attractor. However, when we just consider the inverses of this point, there must be one of the inverses still located on this circle. But when we solve the cubic equation, we could find there are two extra inverses with one located on its left, and the other one is on its right. Moreover, when we traverse through all points on the attractor, the rules on the left and the rules on the right will also form a closed loop respectively, shown in green and orange in these figures. When we, might, when we increase the value of b, the size of the attractor will be increased. For the case of b equals to 2.5, the blue and the orange curve are intersecting at one point, showing this one should representing the rules with multiplicity 2. 
for a larger value of b, the blue one and the orange one intersect at a bigger region, indicating a more complicated backward time dynamics. Please allow me to mention again, these green and orange loops are not the correct inverses we really want. These, image, these images, as well as these chaotic dynamics, would never happen in the ODE case. These are pathologic pathological results due to discretization and non immutability as follows. So we want to make sure these extra pre-images stay far away from our simulation. For example, how far are they go from the attractor? We noted that inverse function theorem is a good tool for us to understand the backward time dynamics. This theorem says, if a continuous differentiable function f is a mapping from Rn to Rn, and its Jacobian determinant at some point p is non-zero, then f is invertible near this point p. Later on in literature, we find that there are two sets where j0 is a collection of all points that have zero Jacobian determinants, and j1 is an image, image of every point belongs to j0. Now we will use a logistic map as an example to illustrate these concepts. We could derive that for this logistic map, j0 and j1 represent the x coordinate and y coordinate of the vertex of the parabola, which is shown in point B in this image. And if x n plus 1 goes from above point B, approaching point B, and then below the point B, the number of its inverses are changed from 0, 1 to 2. Moreover, if you have a point A in this figure, then you are free to go left as the dynamics are always invertible on its left. But when you go right, you need to be careful and to stop until you meet with the point B, since going through point B will make your curve not never monotonic. But if we are only considering if there is any point that has the same image as XA, you can go through point B, but stop before point C, as A and C have the same Y coordinates. So at this time, we know J0 and J1 could be considered as extensions of turning points and local extrema. So now let's get back to case of discretized oscillator. For each case, we added the J0 and J1 curves, with each has two branches respectively. As a case of B equals 2, three closed curves are separated by two J0 branches. For a case of B equals 2.5, as we said before, the blue circle and the orange circle intersect at one point, which should be also on J0. For the case of larger B, the blue and the orange cross traverse through the red branch of J0, showing more complicated, complicated backward time dynamics. We also noted that the attractors did not go across the J1 curves, indicating our previous analysis that J1 should be an extension of local extrema. So now we are interested in a, in a problem. Starting at a point in the state space, how far can we go to make sure our backward dynamics is safe and will not fall into the trouble of non-immutability? So the, let's see the diagram here. The brown part is a region with positive determinant of Jacobian, while two white regions have negative, positive, negative determinants of Jacobian. The boundaries between brown and white are in fact J0 branches. These three red points are inverses of the same point in the state space. So we see, centered at the red point in brown region, we could draw two squares. The yellow one is tangent to the J0 branch, and the blue one is larger. That one of its inverses is exactly on the side of this square. So the yellow square is a region that determinant of Jacobian never changes its sign. And the blue square means no point in this region will have the same image at the center. Neural networks, working as a tool, have already shown their great potential in solving variety data-driven tasks. They use compositions of simple nonlinear functions subject to learnable parameters. For example, in the top right figure, we could see the hidden layer 1 is a function of the inputs. The hidden layer 2 is a function of input hidden layer 1, while the outputs are function of hidden layer 2. In this work, we are considering the performance of the neural network in regression tasks, that is, if it could be used for approximation of some dynamical systems. Now we are going to see if a neural net could be able to learn this older map of the Brassiter model. Here, our network has three inputs, xn, yn, and b, as well as two outputs, xn plus one and yn plus one. The network consists of two hidden layers and use sigmoid function as its activation function. Once it is well-trained, we could use the network function to find the evolution of states, fixed point, and half bifurcations. For each value of b, we could also set the determinant of Jacobian equals to zero to get j0 curves. We could also solve the algebraic equation and get the inverses of, this, of the points on the attractors. The brown regions in the bottom figures have positive determinants, while the white ones have negative. Notice that the sigmoid function is infinite order, continuous, and differentiable. All of these computations I have mentioned above could be done through numerical solvers and 
automatic differenti differentiation techniques. So in these figures, we could see the sigmoid net has a good approximation, not only in the forward dynamics, but also gives a good prediction on backward dynamics, say j or set and inverses. We are also thinking about what is going to happen if we keep the architecture of this neural network. Well, only change the activation function from sigmoid to ReLU. From the picture, we could see as the ReLU function is piecewise linear, the determinant of the Jacobian matrices for this map should be piecewise constant, except undefined determinants at those boundary points. The nature of ReLU net also suggests us we have to modify the definition of the other set. Moreover, due to non differentiability of the ReLU function, it, is, it will cost us more computational resources and it will become more difficult, although we might have similar results compared with the sigmoid net. So now we're, we have realized that if we are trying to learn the map of the system, we are likely to encounter the pathology of non immutability One way to avoid this is to learn a flow instead of a map. Although our data set is in discrete time, we could consider the relation from Xn to Xn plus 1 is exactly a forward order step. ResNet is a kind of neural net that has similar architectures with older methods. The input of ResNet is Xn, and the output is a combination of two parts. One is the neural net function f works on Xn, and the other is the identity function. So we know once the ResNet is well trained, we could get a good approximation of the derivatives. Then we could integrate this, this derivative term to get the trajectory of the flow. The bottom figures show that the ResNet has really good performance, not only in approximating the ODE flow trajectories, but also the vector field. Notice that the ResNet is heuristic by the forward order method. The previous work in our group also shows there exists an architecture of neural network inspired by other numerical schemes, such as runga kuta method. Compared with forward order method, runga kuta forward method uses a linear combination of four terms to approximate the residuals between Xn and Xn plus 1. So it is more accurate, but also more computational expensive. The runga kuta net uses a single network block to approximate each term and use the same formula to sum them up. Notice that k1 to k4 in the runga kuta method have, are actually the same function, but with different inputs. So we see in the diagram of the runga kuta net, each block of ki should, say, should share the same parameters. And similar as ResNet, once this network is well trained, we could have the approximation of derivatives, then do integration to get the trajectory of the flow. There is also another way to avoid non imperability That is, if we are still trying to learn the map, but if the map itself is invertible, we have to design the network with special architectures and constraints. One typical architecture called invertible ResNet has the same architecture with normal ResNet, but in addition, restrict the norm of weights less than one. Researchers also show that show the way called fixed point iteration to guarantee the uniqueness of inverses. The other work called RefNet that has two inputs and two outputs, as well as two independent network blocks, F and G, that would, could uniquely determine the forward path and the backward path of this big architecture. And we could find this network, in fact, is a mixing of forward order step and backward order step heuristic by ODs of X and Y. To sum up, we have shown the concept of unimmutability and put out our attention into discrete time nonlinear dynamics. We use a bracelet model as an example to discuss its properties like fixed point, hop bifurcations, and non-immutability in its discrete time version. We also point out this concept could be applied into the neural network. And we are now working on other types of neural networks to find these pathologies such as LSTMs. Last but not least, we reveal that there are two ways to avoid the non-immutability in approximating dynamical systems, for example, like to learn the flows instead of the maps. Here are the reference I have used, text for time.